Uh, today I'm going to, what I'm going to talk about is part from my PhD project. The topic is layer level hydroxide nanoparticles are developed as highly efficient SI catalysts. As of the 21st century, cancer is arguably the most uh, complex and challenging disease known to mankind, and also an inevitable public health concern of this millennium. Today, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy are the mainstream for treatment for most types of cancer. And immunotherapy <coughs> emerged in the recent decade as a promising alternative. These therapeutics all made significant progress, but they all have limitations. So now, researchers are still looking for effective, safe, and patient acceptable therapeutics for cancer. RNA interference has been proven to be a powerful tool to specifically silence gene expression and holds great promise of the treatment of virus diseases, genetic disorder, and of course, cancer. <clears throat> the recent knowledge of the genetic basis of cancer opened up the potential for the development of an RNA-based cancer therapy. Basically, there are three strategies for such therapeutics. The first is short hairpin RNA, endogenous microRNA, and small interfering RNA. Among these three molecules, SIRNA has been considered to be more suitable for drug uses uh, because it doesn't require genome integration and it can be easily synthesized. However, naked SRNA are very unstable in velocity and it can hardly penetrate cell membrane. Also, it may give rise to non-specific non immune response. Considering <coughs> the limitations, the successful, uh, the future of the SRNA-based cancer therapy is largely dependent on the achieving the, uh, the successful delivery. To address this problem, extensive research is ongoing regarding the design and assessment of, for, uh, for delivery technology for SRNA and use this technology to treat a wide range of cancer. Uh, many of these many of these delivery vehicles have been designed and optimized to encapsulate SRNA and have to promote their intracellular uptake by tumor to exert anti anti cancer purpose. Uh, these works are remarkable, but there are still some significant concerns of these delivery vehicles, such as the cytotoxicity effect and uh, immunogenicity. So now I'm going to introduce a potential and promising SIRN carrier for layer of hydroxide and particles. Uh, as this schematic illustration show, the basic morphology of this particle is hexagonal. And as mentioned by Professor Xu, just said, uh, it is formed by a canonic layer uh, comprised of uh, divalent and trivalent metal ions. To bind this layer, uh, to bind this layer together, within the interlayer regions, there are some anions and water molecules which balance in the overload, overload charge. So the whole part particle is forming a sandwich-like particle. Mm -hmm. this, gender, uh, this particle can be described using this general formula where the two metal ions can be replaced by any other divalent or trivalent metal ions, and A, any types of anions. Uh, the surface, the positive surface charge and the extreme for anions, it allows this particle for the direct loading of anionic drugs <coughs> and biomolecules. Although this loading may decrease its positive surface charge, it is LDA <coughs> will still be sufficiently charge, uh, positive charge to it, facilitate its cellular uptake. And this diagram shows uh, a wide range of applications of LDH-mediated delivery, including anti-cancer drugs, anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, DNA vaccine, and some protein coatings, including like BSA and OVA. So for the, for the delivery of SRNA, we synthesize magnesium and aluminum-based LDH nanoparticle uh, where the canonic layer are formed with magnesium uh, ions and aluminum ions, and uh, chloride ions are exchangeable, located in the interlayer regions. 
Mm, the reason why we chose this uh, particle as SRN carrier is because uh, several of these features are very suitable for SRN delivery. Mm, the first one is its high loading capacity because it's a layered material with very large surface area. Uh, so it can bind a lot of SRN uh, molecules through the surface absorptions and uh, uh, and only exchange of the interlayer. And noteworthily, the loading of sRNA using this uh, nanoparticle can be achieved just by mixing and shaking. As we know, sRNA molecules are very unstable and with a relatively short half-life period. So this simplicity of loading style um, to a large extent perceives the bioactivity of sRNA. The other advantage of it is its high particleability, which means low immunogenicity, which is a very important criteria when we're judging an SR um, carrier. And the other one is low cytotoxicity due to its biodegradability. Uh, after endocytosis, the LDH nanoparticle will uh, slowly dissolve into magnesium, aluminum, and chloride ions which are completely harmless to the body. And also, also it's low cost. The material LDH are made with are not expensive, and the cost per, uh, and also very low cost um, product cost. So for most nanoparticle, uh, 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 for most inorganic SRN carrier, endocytosis and the success in the sort of escape is the critical step for a successful delivery. So for the case of LDH, the endocytosis starts with the adherent of LDH to the membr cell membrane and followed by a, a class remediated endocytosis. After LDH is uh, encapsulated within the endosome, protons was pumped into the endosome to facilitate the acidification and PhD will drop to five. After that, LDH is, will slowly dissolve, will dissolve into ions and release, uh, release its cargoes. This will increase the ionotic strength of within the endosome, and which will open the entrance for water and leading to osmotic swelling. At last, the uh, endosome will burst and release the LDH nanoparticle and the cargoes. So in this study, the question we are going to address is what is the um, optimal parameters for LDH SRN delivery? We are going to use uh, this DNA sci-fi uh, sci label to mimic SRNA and to find out what is the optimal mixing style, optimum mass ratio of LDH to SRNA, and the optimal incubation time of LDH with, SRN, uh, with the cells. So for the pre preparation of LDH nanoparticle, mixed salt solution containing magnesium chloride and aluminum chloride is quickly added into the uh, sodium hydroxide solution under vigorous stirring. And the stirring keeps going for like uh, for 10 to 30 minutes and with the isolation from air. And then the pure LDH slurry will be obtained after stirring and via, uh, via centrifuge and wash. Uh, and then we suspend this LDH slurry with uh, the ionized water, and this suspension will be transferred into a stainless steel autoclave uh, with a Teflon lining. Uh, the autoclave will then experience hydrothermal treatment uh, for hours, and after air cooling, mm -hmm. a homogeneous LDH nanoparticle are often, uh, 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 is give, given rise in most cases. So, mm, uh, here are the character characterization of uh, such particles. You can see uh, LDH nanoparticle exhibit a narrow uh, peak on, the, on around 100 nanometer. Average, uh, average nanoparticle size is 110 nanometer. And the TN image shows the typical morphology, uh, hexagonal morphology of this particle. Mm -hmm. And the FTIR and XRD also show the specific peak for uh, indicating the uh, 
composition and the layered structure of the particle. And then um, we try to optimize those parameters by which LDHD derives our A. The basic morphology we are using uh, DSDA side 5 uh, to uh, load it with LDH with different mixing style and different mass ratio. And then we incubate it with uh, CNE2 cells, which is a nasopharyngeal cancer cell. To uh, evaluate the delivery efficiency, we then use facts. Uh, to, to see the data. Before the optimization, we mm, first conduct some toxicity effect to see if uh, it have any some toxicity to the CNE2 cells. Um, from the data we can see, we add LDH nanoparticle at different concentration to the cells. Uh, and after 24 hours incubation, we use MTT assay to evaluate the cell liability. Uh, you can see here, even at very high concentration of 400 microgram per mil, uh, the LDH nanoparticle did not kill any CNE2 cell, which we confirm its biosafety property on this cell line. And then we design three different uh, mixing styles for the optimization. The first one is to dilute DSDNA and LDH respectively with the DMDN, with DMDN media containing 10% of, of FPS. And then mix them together, and after 15 minutes of incubation at room temperature, temperature, add them to the cell. Um, in the second mixing style, only LDH was, uh, was diluted with the DMDN media and then this DNA was added to the medium and mixed together and incubated for 15 minutes and then added to the cells. And in the last mixing style, this DNA sci-fi was directly added into LDH in an article and then mixed for uh, incubated for 15 minutes. After that, it is diluted by DNA medium and then added to the cell. Here is the data. You can see the mixing style three, which is the direct mixing style, exhibit the highest uh, highest uh, delivery efficiency to CNE2 cells. Uh, this might be due to, in the other two mixing style, part of the surface area of LDH nanoparticle is taken up by the uh, albumin from the serum. So only in mixing style three uh, <coughs> enable the maximum loading capacity of LDH. And then for the optimization of LDH SI mass ratio, uh, same amount of DSDNA was mixed together uh, with LDH uh, nanoparticle at different mass ratio ranging from <coughs> 5 to 1 to 1,060 to 160 to 1. And from this data, you can see uh, the optimal LDH SI mass ratio is ranging from 50 to 1 to 30 to 1. Uh, with we suppose this. Uh, we suppose the best, uh, the optimal mass uh, mass ratio is resulting from the. It's probably resulting from the trade-off between loading amount and the carrier doses effect. When the mass ratio is lower than 50 to 1, uh, there are not there are no sufficient LDH nanoparticles. So there is some unbinded DSDNA there in the system, which cannot go into the cell by themselves, and uh, when the mass ratio is higher, is too high, higher than 30 to 1. Although all this DNA are binded by LDH, but the cell cannot take up so, uh, as much as LDH as it can. So some LDH has been rejected by the cell. Only when the red mass ratio is the moderated one, which is between 50 to 1 to 30 to 1, can mm, the uptake efficiency can be, uh, the highest uptake efficiency can be achieved. And from the result of uh, the uptake time optimization, four hours after treating with LDH delivered sRNA, more than 70% of the CNE2 cells are positive, and robust uptake, uh, or robust growing of the positive uh, percentage ex uh, exists uh, 
during the first hours, although the, uh, although the uh, fluorescence is not strong yet. And here is the summary. LDH has proven to be a stable inorganic nanoparticle with very low cell toxicity. The optimal mixing style of LDH with SRA is direct mixing. And the system can be achieved highest uptake efficiency when the mass ratio of LDH of to SRA is between 50 to 1 to 30 to 1. And four hours after incubation with cells uh, will lead to sufficient uptake percentage for SRA delivery. Mm. I would like to extend my appreciation <coughs> to my, all of my supervisor team and all of my colleagues and also my financial support from the UK International Scholarship. Thank you for your attention. Okay, any questions? Yeah. When you look at the upload, of, uh, which is hindered by the aluminum, uh, I think you should really look at the the the, the effective delivery to a tumor in vivo because the albumin, while competing with the siRNA in vivo, it's actually uh, an active affinity moiety to the tumor area. Uh, like, like there's there's a drug called Abraxan. Ah uh, yes. Actually, when we design the different mixing style, we consider the in vivo, uh, in vivo cases. Because sometimes, mm, although albumin limited the uh, maximum uh, capacity of uh, the DNA of drug loading, but it will increase the stability of the particle in vivo. Mm, so what we design is aiming for the in vivo part. Mm. Thank you for your suggestion.